What's up, everybody? Welcome into First Take. Thank you for being with us. Skip Bayless, Stephen A. Smith, Molly Karam, gentlemen, what's the good word? Wait. He's back. I, is he real or virtual? He's real. He's real. You're real again. I tried to tell you I would wow. be here for you this weekend. Whoa. Did I not say that? What a I great I, I, I got to shake your hand for that. Thank you very much. So y'all be a hello, Molly. How are we you? We appreciate morning? it. Good morning. Yes. Good morning. All right, guys. A lot to get into. Let's work. Do Coming we up, ever. <laughs> Rex yes. Ryan picks up X-Jet <laughs> IK and Polly to join his Buffalo Bill squad. Is this the right move, and how will it all play out? Plus, the Yankees are no longer in first place after being passed by the Red Hot Blue Jays. Is Stephen A. finally feeling the pressure. What is first? he or isn't he? I don't know. We shall see. Yeah. The NFL and Patriots quarterback Tom Brady faced off in federal court Wednesday. Attorneys for both sides were met with tough questions from a U.S. district court judge trying to convince the sides to reach a settlement in Brady's appeal of his four-game suspension for his role in Deflategate. Now, after a public hearing that lasted nearly 90 minutes, Judge Richard Berman met separately with both sides for nearly four hours. No settlement was reached, and Goodell, Brady, and their attorneys left the courthouse in Lower Manhattan with no comment. Both sides due in court again on August 19th. Earlier Wednesday, our Chris Mortensen reported the NFL wants Brady to accept the Wells report, which concluded that Brady was at least generally aware of rules violations surrounding the deflated footballs as a condition of settlement. Sources say Brady will not admit guilt as part of any deal. Skip. Right now, who has the upper hand? Molly, Stephen A. Smith. I would say that Tom Brady is leading Roger Goodell at halftime, 21 <laughs> to 7, with, of course, like one more hearing scheduled for next week, next Wednesday, if it comes that far, if it gets that far. And Stephen A., I'm going to tell you what I've told you from the start. Roger Goodell is in trouble in this case. Now, of course, Judge Berman went out of his way yesterday, as we knew he would, to poke holes in both sides, to expose weaknesses in both cases, all in the spirit of trying to expedite a settlement here to say, look, your case is weak there and your case is weak there. Mm -hmm. But in so doing, he made the NFL's case look far, far weaker than Tom Brady's case to the point that the NFL's case started to sound flat out flimsy to me because Judge Berman shredded the credibility of the Wells report mm -hmm. and he concluded that Tom Brady should not have to acknowledge the Wells report as part of any settlement to your point that Chris our Chris Mortensen had reported that the NFL is insisting that Tom Brady acknowledge some guilt as part of any settlement that ain't happening that will not happen and the judge forced finally the NFL's attorney to acknowledge publicly that the NFL has no direct evidence linking Tom Brady to any deflating of any footballs. And the judge said, gee, he, he, he played sort of the impartial observer, he said, gee, given Tom Brady's second half performance against the Colts in the AFC Championship game with higher inflated footballs, quote unquote, that the judge concludes there could be no competitive advantage gained there by Tom Brady. So the judge is saying, I'm finding it hard to find the gate in deflate gate, as in, where is the crime here, playing off the water gate, obviously the Nixonian water gate, where is the crime in deflate gate? There's no gate going on here. So my bottom line is what I told you yesterday. I believe the judge will finally have to throw up his hands and say, okay, I grant you, Tom Brady, an injunction, which means, as we started to read last night, that this could go on, as the judge pointed out, he was actually warning both sides, this could go on to the U.S. Court of Appeals for the Second Circuit. And the judge warned the lifespan of those cases could be two to three years. So Tom Brady is risking maybe having to serve a four-game suspension when he's 42 years of age after he's won, I don't know, maybe a fifth or a sixth Super Bowl. Big deal. I still think he could win this in court, and I stand by my position. Well, you stand by your position because your position has always been that Tom Brady's innocent as opposed to paying attention to how court proceedings customarily work. 
I totally agree with you from the perspective of I think this does make the NFL look a little bad. I think this has always been much ado about nothing. As far as I'm concerned, Tom Brady should not have been given a four-game suspension. But I've been under the impression that Tom Brady contributed to bringing this on himself because following the advice of his lawyers and the Players Association, labor negotiations, transitioning the labor relations have, 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 have regressed so dramatically over the years that ultimately you have to ask yourself whether or not all of this is worth it. Because in the end, here's the bottom line. We've all read the Ted Wells you know, re investigation report. We've also heard what Tom Brady had to say in the aftermath of it, particularly following the appeal on the part of Roger Goodell. We've all surmised that in all likelihood, where is the hardcore evidence that stipulates that Tom Brady is guilty? And we've all been hard pressed to find it. So as it pertains to the guilt or innocence of mm -hmm. Tom Brady, I think in the court of public opinion, I think it now falls towards two sides. Either he's innocent, or as much ado about nothing anyway, so nobody cares about what level of guilt he may have had in all of this. So in terms of clearing his name or whatever the case may be, that's really null and void. I think the big issue now is him being able to play games this entire season and fighting and making sure that he's not suspended. I don't see that happening. I see the injunction potentially being granted. I see the NFL fighting that. I see depositions being given, sworn taken, mm -hmm. sworn testimony being provided, giving the NFL the license to get guys subpoenaed under oath, forced to ask to answer mm -hmm. questions about the New England Patriots that they may not otherwise prefer to answer. Mm -hmm. And I think that's where the smoking gun, per se, is really going to come into play. Not about Tom Brady or possibly about the Patriots organization, which at the end of the day is what the NFL may likely want to get at. So when we look at it from that perspective, who's losing here? When you look at Roger Goodell, does he look bad? Sure, if he were an elected official. But since, you know, the guy, his, you know, his constituency is 32 owners and only one seems to be against them. And the other one, 31, appears to be for him. I think Roger Goodell is going to be just fine. And in the end, what it comes down to is tell me that the courts are going to sit there and throw out history when it comes to the commissioner and his power to have mm -hmm. dominion and purview over the league. And then I'm all ears. But I have to see that to believe it. Remember, there have been judges in the past that have looked at players and said, you have a great case. They've looked mm -hmm. at the leagues and the commissioner's office and they said, this is bogus. But they've also said. As the commissioner, you have the right to be bogus because the collective bargaining agreement empowers you. That has been my position all along. The CBA has empowered the commissioner to do this. So all of those questions that the courts asked Roger Goodell yesterday, they're making him look very bad. They're going to make him look bad in the court of public opinion. There is no doubt that we're going to look at it. And I actually think it could very well be a maneuver by the courts. Because devoid of concrete evidence, why should Tom Brady look bad? They may very well exonerate Tom Brady in a court of public opinion by reminding the masses that Tom Brady indeed does not look guilty here. There's no hardcore evidence. We don't understand why this is the case, but still may rule. However, the commissioner does have the right to make this call, and we can't usurp his authority they may do that so they may they may they may cut the baby and you know whatever mm -hmm. whatever the phraseology is mm -hmm. forgive me for that i don't want to say cut the baby but the, the, the split it in half <laughs> right split it in half they may sit there and exonerate tom brady mm -hmm. in a court of public opinion mm -hmm. while still maintaining the commissioner's power and in the end all the commissioner cares about is maintaining his power <sighs> would you concede at this point that Tom Brady is looking better and better. Would you concede that he's gaining back some of his tarnished Tom reputation? Tom Brady has been looking better and better since he came out and explained the issue with the cell phone. Even though, again, he had to revisit things in mm -hmm. court and the judge asked his lawyer about throwing away the cell phone. Mm -hmm. You know, and Kessler's explanation wasn't that great. My point to you is Tom Brady has been looking better since that day. And not only that, we've looked at him and surmised there's something else that's going on here. He doesn't come across any longer as somebody who's lying for mm -hmm. himself. He comes across as somebody who's trying to cover for someone else. Uh -huh. That's how he comes across. Uh -huh. So now, and that so someone else could be uh, 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 a coach. That's maybe? right. That's right. So my point to you is that 
Roger Goodell in the NFL may very well want it to get to that point. You think so? In other words, yeah. they may not want it for Mr. Kraft, mm -hmm. but they may want it like, you push this, y'all yep. keep pushing this, mm -hmm. you're bringing this on yourself. Okay. Because all he had to do was take the suspension. You know, y'all took the fine mm -hmm. and the confiscation of a first and a fourth round pick. We wanted him to take this. He's not taking it. Okay. Y'all are bringing this on yourself. That could very well be what's going on here. Okay. We don't know. I will concede back to you, being completely objective here, to your early stance, Tom Brady didn't handle this correctly. He didn't cooperate fully that the NFL scored only once yesterday, and you brought it up. Jeff Kessler did, he was sort of forced to admit, I guess, Tom Brady didn't handle it very well during, he could have handled it differently during the Wells interrogation Which or investigation. Which is what I've been saying all along. Okay, I'm, I, I give you and I grant you that much. But I said from two days after the, the Wells report became public, Tom Brady would fight this to the legal death. And I think you have to start to admire the way he's fighting back because he is winning here. No, I don't, to, in all honesty. I mean, it's predictable what he's doing since he's allowed it to get to this point. I think Tom Brady, for the most part, has been a puppet of his lawyers and of the Players oh, Association. I, don't. I think they've been his puppet. Well, well so. I'm going to tell you why. Okay. I think about the nine lawyers on each side that showed up. I think about the union dues that these players pay, how their pockets don't go nearly as deep as that of the NFL. And I'm thinking about DeMora Smith with Kessler and those lawyers and all those billable hours. That's what I'm looking at. And I'm saying to myself, all of that for this, when Tom Brady, we're talking about Tom Brady. We ain't talking about Geno Smith. We ain't talking about E.J. Manuel. We ain't talking about Matt Flynn or somebody. We're talking about Tom Brady. Commissioner, I'd like to come up to the to New York and have mm -hmm. a talk with you. Can we go and talk about this and handle that? It could have been handled. It didn't have to come to this. But their M.O. is to make everything into a legal issue. And because of that, you get everybody's back up and make this into far more of a fight than it should have ever been. Tom Brady had to cachet the clout, the stature to handle this differently. And part of the reason that he has to fight like this is because he didn't handle it appropriately. I can't admire how he's fighting now when he put himself in a position to have to fight when it may not have come to that at all, if he had handled it differently. Okay, but wasn't it clear to you from the start that Roger Goodell had picked on this golden boy quarterback to rebuild Roger's power and autonomy and credibility in the wake of the mishandling of Ray Rice and all the domestic No, because violence. I certainly don't believe that about Troy Vincent, and Troy Vincent felt the same way. I certainly don't believe that by a plethora of former and present NFL players who all felt the same way. We have Ryan Clark, who we all respect and continues to do an outstanding job for this network now that he's retired from football, mm -hmm. just left the NFL last year and sit up here and said to most of us, we've always looked at the Patriots as cheaters. We just looked at the was that, that at get Tom caught. Brady no. or at the head coach? See, you can't you can't you can't pause you can't to rip it apart like that, Skip. When they're talking about the Patriots, they said the Patriots. Now, obviously, Bill Belichick is at the helm, and you get that he's the brain trust behind all of that, but somebody has to capitulate to it in terms of stuff being exercised. Like, for example, if the coach comes to you and says to you, they're going to do this, they're going to do this, they're going to do that. You're trying to tell me at no time you don't know that they're spying on the other team? You don't know that they got other team signals? You don't know that they're figuring out what teams are going to do? On the defensive side of the ball, when you look at some of the things that the Patriots were aware of. You're trying to tell me that Bill Belichick told him to do that, but none of the players had any idea, you know, how the information was being acquired. Of course, everybody is going to be assumed and presumed to be in on it. I'm not here to, to, to cast aspersions on the New England Patriots. As far as I'm concerned, they're an elite franchise. Mm -hmm. I love me some Robert Kraft. They're America's team. I'm just echoing what their contemporaries have said about okay. them. All right. That is a fact. But the bottom line of what we have just seen happen here is that Tom Brady was convicted, widely convicted in the court of public opinion as a cheater and a liar. Right. And he is slowly unconvicting well, himself. Well, well, I don't except that sketch. I, and, and, and except let me, let, except for the sketch. That, that was the only blow he took I don't yesterday. think he's slowly exonerating himself. 
I think he's already done it. I think that when we think about Tom Brady now, we don't think about him deflating footballs. We think about other folks being involved. We think about him just going out there and playing. We're thinking about a fight that the NFL, in concert with the Players Association, has allowed to span eight months. And I don't care what anybody says. Y'all can sit up there and act like this is an aside and it is not a big deal. I consider Tom Brady, I want to echo, I'm going to reiterate what I said. Tom Brady, too me, regardless of how vehement he's fighting this, looks like a puppet for the lawyers and the Players Association because it's going on eight months and I'm looking at a team of lawyers for the Players Association in the courtroom and all I can think about is billable hours. Man, I got I, look, well, I, they're, they're fighting City Hall, listen, man. Listen, they're listen, fighting listen, the National listen, Football listen, League. You better have a team I, of lawyers. No, no, no. I'm telling you, they look forward to it. Because they get well, paid. That's fine. They get paid. Well, that's, See, you keep ignoring that. That's, that's a the big price deal. of admission to do this, man. Me, that's, that's a problem. That's where your leadership comes into play. That's where labor relations come into play. Because we're talking about Tom Brady's reputation. Tom Brady is in a position where he now has to find himself fighting for his reputation. That fight was supposed to take okay. place long before it got to this point. But the, uh, the, the initial inclination, the de facto position, was to lawyer up. That's what they did, and that's the who, problem. Who do you think is paying Jeff Kessler, the Michael Jordan of lawyers? Who do you think paying Tom Brady? You think Tom Brady's the only one paying him? Yep. You think that I do. You think that Jeffrey Kessler's only getting a check from Tom Brady? I do. And he ain't getting a check from the Players yep, Association. That's what I believe. You don't know Jeffrey Kessler. Jeffrey well, Kessler double dips better than uh, most. All right. Okay. Well, I Jeffrey don't know Kessler that. Fonto, this brother gets paid. I think Tom Jeffrey Brady Kessler, went and got I, Jeff I would Kessler. love to see Jeffrey Kessler's bank account. Every single case. Well, he deserves it. He earns it. Really? Yeah. Really? Listen. Let me tell you something right now. I respect Jeffrey Kessler because he's obviously a very, very competent man. That's I'd why. Say. But he also does a great, fantastic job of ingratiating himself with players' association for various respective sports, where as a result, he ends up getting pazzed. Okay. Okay. That's fine. He deserves All right. it. All right. Okay. Can't, can't Win blame him. Guess what, guys? You won't you won see yesterday. Tom Brady tonight. That's winning? You can see him right here. Can we pull that picture up, please, that sketch for a second? Yeah, mm. check it out. So the Patriots are hosting the Green Bay Packers tonight. Of course, as I just mentioned, Tom Brady won't be playing. You'll get a look at Garoppolo, and we expect to see that bad man, Aaron Rodgers. That game is at 730, yes? Yes, I just got confirmation, Steve what? Davis. Okay. The Players Association is paying Jeffrey Kessler. Paying? Not Tom Brady. Not Tom Brady? The Players Association. Are you sure about I'm that? Positive. Okay. I would rely right. on my sources. Okay. And I'm telling right. you what I know. Well, I know Brady went out and got him. He requested him. Okay. All right. Kessler's get paid by the Players Association. All right. He always gets paid by the Players Association. Skip, when I watch the Patriots and Packers yes. tonight, I'm going to watch preseason a whole different way now. I'm going to look for flashes, flashes. and pops. He's selling preseason football. I'm, I'm watching, man. All right. Well,